Hi everyone, so with the New South Wales Selective High School Placement Test in March 2014, I thought it'd be the perfect time now to post up um, our detailed solutions to how we go about certain general ability questions. Um, Exam Success is running their series of lectures which cover general ability in mathematics, reading and writing um, this year for the in preparation for the 2014 test. Um, what we'll do is we'll go through um, two questions in the general ability practice set practice test which they've publicly released. Um, you can download this from the New South Wales Department of Education and Training's website. So general ability sample test four that we'll go through and we're going through questions eight and questions 10. Okay, let's go through question eight. So first things first, I read the question. Three of the following words have similar meanings. Which word has a different meaning? Okay, with these types of questions, it's um, pretty much looking at the answer, which is the A, B, C, D, finding out which three are the, I guess, similar and what is the one that is different to all of them. The easiest way to approach this, especially when they have very difficult words that you don't know, is I guess process of elimination. Um, so I would look at the two, two, I guess two easiest words. So it'd be questionable and certain. Okay, we know that questionable is definitely different from certain. Okay, so we've got two opposing ones there. Because three of the following words have similar meanings, we only need one more word to have a similar meaning and then we can isolate the different meaning word. This is what I mean. So we've got questionable. Let me just circle this. And this is a really good strategy to use when you, I guess, you don't know what the words are. So let's see. Um, let me just get a comment form here. Okay, you've got this, it's questionable, and you've got certain, which is an opposite, so I'll highlight that. Then we'll look at the other two, two words. I know what dubious means, it is similar to questionable, so I would circle that. You can see there that you don't really need to know what indeterminate means to to find out that your answer is actually certain because that is the word that has different meaning. Because you've got here questionable, which is similar to dubious, and then because those two are similar, it isolates this certain one out, therefore making that word the one that would be the answer. So check question eight being C, you check your answer when you're um, going through the exam paper yourself. Yeah, and it is C. So that, that is how you approach it, especially when you're doing these practice questions by yourself. It's a really good idea to understand exactly how you're going to approach it. So what's your strategy that you're going to use in this um, exam so that when you do get when you do encounter words that you don't know, um, you'll be able to answer the question successfully. Okay, because general ability as much is as much of a strategy exercise um, other than just knowing what these words mean. So let's just apply this to question three here. Okay, this is the same strategy. Three of the following words have the similar meanings. Which word has a different meaning? So same question, different words. Okay, let's see the two words that I know. So I would know the word idiot idiotic. Because some, sometimes some of the things I say... Um, <laughs> uh, uh, um, Sometimes I think they're a bit silly. Um, and then I also know what the word sage means, okay? Um, I've already isolated two very different um, two different words here that are, you know, opposites in meaning. Um, the only other thing I need to do is find one other word which would match either idiotic or sage in, um, in similarity. The only other word I know is moronic, so I like that in the circle, which means that obviously sage is the answer to this. So that's a really simple strategy that you can use. I personally don't 
um, know what this word is if I was in the exam and therefore it wouldn't really matter because I've already got the correct answer here. So it's about strategy here. Okay. Um, in terms of these questions as well, the other thing you need to do is do a lot of reading. That will help you in your um, reading test, but it, all, it will also help you discover, um, not discover, but it will also help you with your vocab and your vocab would be useful in this because you wouldn't need to use this strategy if you already knew what the meanings were. Um, okay, let's move on to the next question. So the next question is question 10. Which two of the following statements together prove that some mammals lay eggs? Okay, so this is a really interesting type of question because what you're trying to do is you're trying to find two statements that together even though they're saying totally different things, prove that the statement some mammals lay eggs are true. Okay, so how do you go about these type of questions? You need to isolate every item in this section, okay, um, in this sentence. So first part would, uh, I would think would be important would be mammals and the second part would be laying eggs. Okay, the first part is, I guess, the object being the mammals. Second part is the action, so the laying of the eggs. So that's what you're trying to find here. Okay, and here are the, are the biggest clues within the solutions. Laying eggs would be the first thing I look at. And the other things would be mammals. Echidnas are mammals here. And monotremes are mammals. And then here, echidnas and monotremes. Um, what I already know is that laying eggs is one essential part of this statement, so therefore this part must be true. So can you see here, the strategy I'm using is about reasoning. It's about saying, okay, well, what can be true? What is false? What do I know is true? And how is that related? Okay, so that's the essence of general ability. Um, it's not necessarily knowing what's right or what's wrong. It's about knowing what's, I guess, what relates to what well and what sticks together. Um, okay, so echidnas are mammals. Um, that could be true because there's the word mammal here. Uh, monotremes are mammals. That could be true as well. And echidnas are monotremes. Well, we'll just leave that for now because we're looking at the idea of mammals, okay? Um, your key here with finding the correct answer would be this part here. Monotremes lay eggs. The fact that you've got lay eggs there is one part of this equation here. The second part of the equation is mammals because they're relating to monotremes in um, solution one. The answer would be here. Monotremes are mammals because this part here relates to the mammal section. Okay. It wouldn't be echidnas are monotremes because if, if echidnas are monotremes and monotremes lay eggs, well, is monotremes are monotreme mammals. That's the key thing. So the mammals is missing. Um, and if you had something like echidnas are mammals and monotremes lay eggs, well, where's the link between mammals and monotremes? Okay, so these the, this question is really testing a linkage between the mammals and the second part, which is laying eggs. So therefore, if one and three is my answer, it would be A. Okay, can you see how by stepping through everything and thinking through logically, you can get to the answer quite easily in general ability and by doing more practice tests, but understanding exactly what you're testing and understanding the strategy behind it, you can get to the answer quite easily and get to the correct answer. Um, so, so 10A, let me check the answer down here. 10A, yep, so that's correct. And that's pretty much what we'll cover in um, the lectures. For general ability, we'll go through certain um, question types. So we've got things like codes, um, which are the missing letters in the series. Um, and I'll teach you strategies and how to approach them. So my view is general ability is something that you can learn because 
it's about strategy and it's about getting the correct um, way of approaching things and just learning what to eliminate and what to include. Um, so I hope believe that has helped. Um, if you do have any questions, please feel free to put comments on um, you, YouTube. Um, otherwise, I look forward to meeting you in the lectures. Okay, thank you.